In this video, you're going to learn how to do long exposures in urban environments in the dark. And you're going to be able to do this with the camera you already own with the kit lens. And we're going to cover some clever tips and tricks to maximize your experience. Hello, my name is Chris Attrell. I have taught night photography to over 6,000 students all across Western Canada. Tonight, I'm shooting in Medicine Hat, Alberta with an entry-level Canon M50 with a kit lens. The reason why I do these long exposures in urban environments is to get these really high quality images. When you put your camera on a tripod and shoot one, 10 or 15 second exposures, you burn in such a high quality image that if you print these six feet by four feet, you won't see any grain or artifacts in your image. I do this style of photography all the time. Look at this picture of this old movie theater in Daysland, Alberta. I shot this with a wide angle lens for 25 seconds. The quality of this image is so good that you can see the moth on the poster from across the street. If you handheld the same shot, there would probably be a lot of grain and motion blur. Another benefit to doing urban low light photography is it gives you some experience operating your camera in the dark and low light situations. So let's put our camera in shutter mode. A professional would use manual mode and set their ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. When you're in shutter mode, you're just going to set the shutter speed and allow your camera to set the ISO and aperture for you. So on your mode dial, look for S. For Canons, it's TV. It stands for time value. If you want to set your ISO, set it to 200. Or do what I do. I use auto ISO. It's going to choose the right ISO anyway, so you might as well just leave it on auto. Most cameras have an ISO button. Press that and make sure it's an auto. For Nikons, you'll have to hit the menu, shooting menu, then ISO sensitivity settings. Turn this to on. And for Sony's and Fuji's, just look for the function button and go inside the menu to change the ISO value. When I'm doing urban low light photography, I just set the shutter speed. When you spin your command dial, you're changing the shutter speed. So when you spin your command dial to the point where you see the inches symbols, that means seconds. One inch is one second, five inches is five seconds. Let's get our camera set to 15 seconds or 15 inches. So that's all you're gonna do is you're gonna put your camera on a tripod, put your camera in shutter mode, and start off at 15 second exposures. You could shoot one, five, or 30 if you wanted. 15 seconds is a great starting point. You can't start doing urban low light photography until it gets a little dark. That's usually about 20 minutes after the sunset. Then you just go find the same buildings and subjects you would shoot during the day, but now shoot them at night. Here are some examples of 15 second exposures here in Medicine Hat. These look pretty good and the quality of these images is really high. As a beginner, you can use autofocus for most situations. However, take the time to learn manual focus. If you ever want to shoot in the country, you're going to have to learn it, so you might as well learn it in urban environments where it's a little easier. I made an entire video on three methods for manually focusing in any low light or dark situation. The best time to do this is during blue hour. That's about 20 minutes after the sun sets until it gets dark. The lighting is very even and it looks really cool to have that blue in the sky with warmer colors in the interior of buildings. That's why when you rent a hotel online, the high-end hotels take 15 second exposures during blue hour of their facilities. Once it gets dark, you are now at the mercy of street lamps and there's nothing you can do about it. That's why I prefer shooting during blue hour. You notice in these three pictures, one is shot just after the sunset, the other one is shot during blue hour, 
And the last one is shot in the middle of the night. They all look different, but you can see how the street lamp started to interfere with the image. And if a car drove by, you're going to notice the headlights or taillight streaks in your image. I like having these in my picture sometimes. If you want a lot of streak, shoot 30 seconds. If you want a little bit, shoot one second. If all you're doing as a beginner is auto-focusing and then choosing a shutter speed and taking your picture, you're going to find this is rather simple and get great results. But sometimes your pictures are too bright or too dark. In which case, you can use a feature on your camera called exposure compensation. Every camera has a button that looks just like this. When you hold that button down and spin your command dial, you can darken or brighten your image. And if you turn live view on your camera, you can sometimes see this happen live. If you're not sure if your camera has live view, your manual should tell you. But for most Canons, there's a button with a red dot beside it. When you press that, it turns on live view so you can see on the back. For Nikons, there's a button or a switch that says LV. Here's the same picture using three different exposure compensations so you can see what it does. When you are finished with exposure compensation, you must put it back to zero yourself. When you turn your camera off and on, it doesn't reset. So all these images that I took were with long exposures with exposure compensation, nothing else. I didn't set the ISO, aperture, I didn't do metering or white balance. A pro would do a better job in manual mode, but it's a lot more fun when you only have to play with a couple settings, so you can concentrate on the creative part of your photography. And the best thing is, you can do this with the most entry-level simple equipment. And this entry-level Canon M50 does such an amazing job, I prefer using this over my Pro Nikon 610 with my expensive lenses. It's small, it's light, and you can flip the screen and touch the screen. I can't imagine getting any easier than this. I put a link to this camera in the description below. So let's look at some of my pictures. Let's zoom right in on this and look at the details. It would be difficult to do this handheld. And that's the difference between ordinary photography and really cool pictures. And it gets even more fun. You can take a flashlight and walk into your exposure and light things if you want. As long as you keep moving, don't light yourself and don't let the camera see the flashlight. Like in this example, I'm walking up really close to this movie theater so I can light the sign better. But you don't see me in the image. I'm going to be posting a whole bunch of night and low light photography videos this summer and fall. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. If you get a really cool urban night shot and you want me to see it, please tag me on Instagram when you post your picture. I'll make sure I like it and comment. And here's a tip for my wife. When you are doing urban low light photography, make sure you're aware of your surroundings that you don't walk into a bad neighborhood. You don't want to get robbed. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really hope you enjoyed this video.